I'm trying, folks. Hang in there.
Hi, Ron. Second. Right. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, folks. Evening, all. Just quick adjustment there as we go. Right. Lovely uh, for to see so many people on again. Hope you uh, enjoyed the music. I thought it was a appropriate time to have a bit of a a VA, VE day um, a start up, a warm up. Um, so we might, we might finish on something stirring as well at the end. We'll see how we get on. Um, so a big hello to everybody. Thanks all for uh, joining in as usual. So we've got uh, 29 on and we might get a couple more as we, uh, as we start going. Um, so first and foremost, uh, uh, I just want to say thank you. We've had quite a lot of bear names in. Uh, most of which we can broadcast, uh, but we'll start putting those, or Damien will start putting those up on the um, on the Facebook page, and perhaps a little 
uh, uh, thing on the net. So keep those coming in. Uh, some of you have had two or three goes, which is fine. Um, and uh, some others have also popped a few other names in. Um, I think you know, the yeah, COVID uh, seems quite popular. COVID with a K, I think, is probably the way forward, but we'll, we'll see. Um, a huge thank you to uh, Neve and Harry Ford, who have done bare pictures. So well done, Neve and Harry. Absolutely super. Um, and thank you very much for sending those in. Um, keep scribbling away. Do some more if you want. Uh, and again, we'll lump, we'll put those to good use as well. So that's brilliant. Thank you. Uh, so before we start the quiz tonight, um, we better give you the uh, the answer for the photograph. So the photograph uh, that we had on the uh, answer sheet last week, I think almost everybody got that. That was, of course, Arnold Palmer. So that was good old Arnold Palmer on that photo. Uh, you'll see on the quiz uh, photograph this week on the answer sheet, um, we've toughened it up a little bit, or, or Damien's toughened it up a bit. Um, so really interesting uh, uh, photos, interesting question, that one. So have a, have a crack at that one. Um, so we shall make a start. If you get your pens and papers and your beers, or oh, beer, hang on, beer. Lost me beer behind. Here it is. Cheers. <laughs> so what we'll... Uh, what we'll do tonight so we've uh, i've tried to make it a bit more i think last week was probably too easy really so tried to make it a little bit more mixed uh, this week so let's uh let's see how you get on so if you've got your pens and papers and your beers at the ready uh, cheers good health to you all and we'll do round one <laughs> okay so round one uh, appropriately is the bare necessities so question number one What's the name of the famous German company that specializes in manufacturing high quality collectible bears? So number one, what's the name of the famous German company that specializes in manufacturing high quality collectible bears? Question number two, the giant panda mainly feeds on what? So the giant panda mainly feeds on what? Question number three in the Bear Necessities is, what's the name of the family who adopt Paddington Bear. So what's the name of the family, surname of the family, who adopt Paddington Bear? Question number four. What famous bear celebrated 65 years in show business in 2017? So what famous bear celebrated 65 years in show business in 2017? Question number five. In Rudyard Kipling's Jungle Book, who was described as the sleepy brown bear? So in Rudyard Kipling's Jungle Book, who was described as the sleepy brown bear? Question number six. What vintage bear was created by Mary Tortell and first appeared in the Daily Express? So what vintage bear was created by Mary Turtell and first appeared in the Daily Express? Question number seven. Name the 2012 film about a crude talking bear owned by John Bennett.
So can you name the 2012 film about a crude talking bear owned by John Bennett? Question number eight. Yogi Bear lives with Boo Boo in what national park? So Yogi Bear lives with Boo Boo in what national park? Question number nine. Name the rabbit in the Winnie the Pooh stories. So name the rabbit in the Winnie the Pooh stories. And then question number 10. What is the world's largest living bear? So what is the world's largest living bear? So 10 points up for grabs on that round, one point each uh, answer. I'll give you a couple of minutes to get those down. Have a little drink. Cheers, good health. Okay, if you're ready then, here we go. The answers to round one, the bare necessities. So the name of the famous German company that specializes in high quality collectible bears is Steif. Steif. I'll take any spelling. S-T-E-I-F-F. -F, Steif. Question number two. The giant panda mainly eats bamboo. So they mainly eat bamboo. Answer to question three, the family who adopt Paddington Bear are the Brown family. Mr. and Mrs. Brown. Question four, the famous bear that celebrated 65 years in show business is of course Sooty. Sooty Bear. Question five in Rudyard Kipling's Jungle Book, the sleepy brown bear is blue. And then question six, the vintage bear created by Mary Turtell was Rupert. Rupert Bear. Some of our members have got his trousers, haven't they? So very nice. Question number seven. The 2012 film about a crude talking bear was called Ted. And question number eight, Yogi and Boo Boo live in Jellystone Park. Not Yellowstone, but Jellystone Park. Question number nine, this one took me ages to get to the answer, but the rabbit in Winnie the Pooh is called Rabbit much like owls called owl and everybody else is called everything else. So rabbit is the name of the rabbit. And the largest living bear in the world is the polar bear. But lovely, fluffy and cuddly from a distance. Rip your head off if you've got anywhere near one. So polar bears. So 10 points we had there. If you want to top your scores up and add them to your answer sheet, if you can do live. And we'll have a little pause there, see how the scores are looking, and then we'll uh, crack on with round two. Okay, it's very quiet on the chat so far. Must be something going on out there.
Okay. Aha, well done, Nick. There you go. Nine out of ten. Very good. That's the way to start. Hang in there. We'll keep going. So here we are. So we'll turn the wick up a little bit here, and we'll do round two. And there are 11 points to be had here. 11 points. So question number one, the French connection. And question number one is, who was the wife of Louis XVI, who was executed in the French Revolution? So who was the wife of Louis XVI, who was executed in the French Revolution? Question number two, on what date does Bastille Day fall? So on what date does Bastille Day fall? Question number three, two points available here. The film, The French Connection, is set in two cities. Can you name them? So one point each. The film, The French Connection, is set in two cities. Can you name them? Have a look, think about that. Question number four, what did the French give to the Americans in the 1880s? So what did the French give to the Americans in the 1880s? Question number five, with whom was Cosimodo in love? Nice, eh? So who was Cosimodo in love with? I don't know, but his face rings a bell. I'll tell you that joke one day if you're really sad. <laughs> Question number six. Who was the intended victim of the jackal in Frederick Forsyth's novel? So who was the intended victim of the jackal in Frederick Forsyth's novel? Question number seven, who is the Frenchman who won the Formula One World Championship four times in the 1980s and 1990s? So who is the Frenchman who won the Formula One World Championship four times in the 1980s and 1990s? Question number eight. What was built in Paris as the entrance arch to the 1889 World's Fair? So what was built in Paris as the entrance arch to the 1889 World's Fair? Question number nine. What was the name of the song 
that was performed by Serge Gainsborough and Jane Birkin that was banned by the BBC. So what was the name of the song performed by Serge Gainsborough and Jane Birkin that was banned by the BBC? And then finally, in the French Connection, question number 10, who invented the aqualung? So number 10, who invented the aqualung? There we go. So have a little chat about that between you. Good, where are we going? I like Phil's quiz style, well done Phil. That's the right way to do a quiz, my friend. Absolutely. <laughs> when in doubt, drink. Patty arrived late. Where have you been, Patty? You're not an American time, are you? What's up, what's going on? <laughs> Super, okay. All righty, um, answers to round two. The French Connection. So the wife of Louis the Sixteenth, who uh, lost her head, uh, was of course Marie Antoinette. So Marie Antoinette. Uh, number two, on what date does Bastille Day fall? It falls on the fourteenth of July. Fourteenth of July, Bastille Day. Okay, two points up for grabs on this one. The film The French Connection is set in Marseille and New York. So it's set in Marseille and New York, one point each. Question number four, in the 1880s, the French gave a gift to the Americans of the Statue of Liberty. Question number five, Cosimodo was in love with Esmeralda. Esmeralda, Esmeralda, bless her. Question number six, the intended victim of the jackal was Charles de Gaulle. Charles de Gaulle. Question number seven, the Frenchman who won the Formula World Championship four times was Alain Prost. Alain Prost. Question number eight, the entrance arch built, the entrance arch, sorry, built in Paris for the 1889 World's Fair was the Eiffel Tower, not the Arc de Triomphe, but it was the Eiffel Tower was the entrance arch to the World's Fair. A question number nine, the name of the nutty song, uh, sung by Serge Gainsborough and Jane Birkin, was Je T'aime, or I love you, if that's how you want to go. Je T'aime, moi non plus is its full title, but Je T'aime will do. And then question number 10, Jacques Cousteau invented the aqualung. So the aqualung was invented by Jacques Cousteau. Also credited to Emile Gagnon, if you want to be really precise about it. But it was Jacques Cousteau who is most known for inventing the aqualung. There you go. So have a little tot up of that little bunch. We'll have a little drinky. And we'll see what the scores are looking like now. Yeah. 
There you go. So I hope you're all getting your preparations together tomorrow for your VE day, whether it's a street party, garden party, whatever. I hope, uh, hope the weather holds out. Shame the old boys can't have a march, but, you know, hopefully they'll, they'll reset it later in the year and they'll get them out there. So there we go. Good. <laughs> Come on, Nick. That's just the French round. There's plenty more to do yet. I've got sport next, Nick. You asked for sport, so I've got sport. So hang in there. <laughs> okay. So once you've uh, hopefully you've done your round, your uh, scores in there, we'll do round three. And round three is sport. So name the sport in which the following terms are used. You don't need to define what it means, but just name the sport in which the following terms are used. So in which sport, question number one, is the term golden set? So in which sport would you hear the term golden set? Question number two, in which sport would you hear the term saucer pass? So in which sport would you hear the term saucer pass? Question number three, in which sport would you hear the term the South Stake? I'll chips with mine, please. So which term would you hear the South Stake? Which sport would you hear the South Stake? Question number four. In which sport would you hear the term Peloton? So where would you hear the term peloton? Question number five. In which sport would you hear the term spear tackle? In which sport would you hear the term spear tackle? Question number six, in which sport would you hear the terms Rudolph and Randolph? So what sport might you hear the terms Rudolph and Randolph? I'll give you a second on that one. Question number seven, in what sport would you hear the term Indian dribble? So what sport would you hear the term Indian dribble? Number eight, in which sport would you hear the term Mawashi? So in what sport would you hear the term Mawashi? Question number nine, in which sport would you hear the term the corridor of uncertainty? So where would you hear the corridor of uncertainty?
Sounds like a horror film, doesn't it? I'm just going down the corridor of uncertainty, dear. I'll be back in five minutes. Question number 10. In which sport would you hear the term stones and houses? So where might you hear the terms stones and houses? All right, let's have a little go at that lot. Okay, here come the answers. 10 points, one point for each answer. So question number one, you would hear the term golden set in tennis. So a golden set is a set which is won without losing a single point. So six nil, 24 points, a golden set. Question number two, a saucer pass is in ice hockey. And it's where it's passed to another player flying through the air like a flying saucer. So it's ice hockey. Question number three, you'd hear the South Stake in croquet. So the south stake in croquet is where you start from. It's the starting stake before you start bashing it around the grass. Question number four, the term peloton isn't just in those really irritating adverts that are on the telly all the time. It is cycling. So the main group or pack of riders is called the peloton. Question number five, a spear tackle you will hear in rugby, either Union League or even Australian rules, but a spear tackle is in rugby. It's an illegal tackle where you get lifted up and bashed in the, bashed in the ground. It wasn't illegal when I played. It was prerequisite of playing number eight. So spear tackle is a in rugby. Question number six, I love this one. A Rudolph and a Randolph would be heard in trampolining. So they're trampolining moves, a Rudolph and a Randolph. Question number seven, an Indian dribble is not on the way back from the curry house. It is playing hockey. So an Indian dribble you'd hear in hockey when it's pushing the ball rapidly from side to side and then reversing the stick side to side, putting the stick right side to side, um, as sorted out, as invented by the Indian hockey team, one assumes. But question number eight, a mawashi is the belt that a sumo wrestler wears. So you would hear mawashi in sumo wrestling and it's the belt that they wear. In fact, that's all they wear, isn't it? rather disturbingly. Question number nine then, the corridor of uncertainty is in cricket. So the corridor of uncertainty is in cricket, which is uh, the area that a ball can pitch and then anything can happen. And then question number 10, you would find stones and houses in curling. So the stone is the thing that you chuck down the ice and the house is the target you're supposed to stop it in at the end. So stones and houses are in curling. There you go. So again, put your scores down, see how you got on with that one. Working on there, there we are. <laughs> 
Uh, there's plenty to go yet. Keep on going. Keep on going. Okay, so as usual, we'll take a little uh, little break there. Put a bit of background music on for you if, if I can find something. So it's uh, it's 2046 now. Um, so go and reload your crisps and chips and drinks and things. Um, and what shall we say? Uh, what is it? 46, uh, 55. Back at 2055, and then we'll crack on with uh, round four. Okay, enjoy. See you in a bit. Thank you. 
we have. Oh, righto, folks, here we go again. Okay. Here we are. <laughs> Get stuff. There you go. Nick's on the Bacardi, which is good. <laughs> Brian's on. Look at that. Brian has done a note there. Just found out how to do an emoji. Brian, give yourself an extra point. Because <laughs> I know for you, that was probably quite challenging. <laughs> Have a point. You deserve it. <laughs> well done. <laughs> good, good, good. Okay. Right, welcome back. Hope you've all got your, your drinks and nibbles uh, sorted out. We'll uh, we'll uh, crack on. And uh, uh, this one, uh, which I thought was appropriate. Uh, so round four, there's 10 points available. Uh, so this round is called Drink Yourself Dizzy. So drink yourself dizzy. Not necessarily instruction, but if you want to do that, go for it. So question number one under Drink Yourself Dizzy. What was the name of country music's first superstar who died at the age of 29 from drink and drug abuse? How cheerful. So what was the name of the country music's first superstar who died at the age of 29 from drink and drug abuse? Question number two, what brand of beer does Homer Simpson drink? Thirsty, just thinking about it. So what brand of beer does Homer Simpson drink? Question number three, which cocktail is vodka, triple sec, cranberry juice, and lime juice? So which cocktail is vodka, triple sec, cranberry juice, and fresh lime juice? Question number four, what popular drink was originally called Brad's drink, B-R-A-D, Brad's drink? So popular drink, it was originally called Brad's drink. Question number five, who painted the absinthe drinker in 1901? So who painted the absinthe, absinthe drinker in 1901? I'll let you go through your artists while you're doing that. Talking of artists, cheers. <laughs> Question number six. From which country does the drink Cinzano come from? So from which country does Cinzano come from? Blend of subtle herbs and spices. I've slipped into Uncle Len then. Yeah. If you're old enough to remember that advert. Question number seven. In 2002, which drink was advertised by a cat called Tom who went clubbing? So in 2002, a TV advert for which drink featured a cat called Tom who went out clubbing? Question number eight. 
Question number eight. What drink is made from molasses? So what drink is made from molasses? Question number nine, which famous author once said, work is the curse of the drinking class. Couldn't agree more. Work is the curse of the drinking class. Which author said that? And then question number 10, how is the drink which was introduced in 1929 and originally called lithiated lemon known now? So the drink that first came out in 1929, it was originally known as lithiated lemon What's it known as now? So again, I have a few moments to ponder those ones. That's nice, damon has got the whole family around. Good, good. Hope all the training went well. Lovely place, Cranwell. Uh, there we <laughs> Good. Rolling some out there, it's good stuff. Good, good, right, so hopefully you have got your acts in order and we shall do this one. So here we go, drink yourself dizzy. So the answer to question number one, the name of the country music superstar who died at the age of 29 from drink and drug abuse was Hank Williams. So it was Hank Williams. Question number two, the brand of beer that Homer drinks is Duff. Duff beer. Question number three, the cocktail that is vodka triple sec cranberry juice and fresh lime juice is a cosmopolitan. How awfully, awfully posh. Question number four, the popular drink that was originally called Brad's drink is Pepsi. So Pepsi was originally called Brad's drink. Question number five, who painted the absinthe drinker? It was Pablo Picasso. So Pablo Picasso painted the absinthe drinker. I think back in the days when you used to paint normal stuff and not all the wacky noses on the back of your head stuff. Question number six, uh, the country as drunk by Uncle Len was Cinzano, and it comes from Italy. So Cinzano comes from Italy. And then question number seven, if anyone got this one, good luck to you, because I don't remember it. The TV advert that featured a cat called Tom going clubbing was for Bacardi Breezers. So Bacardi Breezers were drunk by Tom the cat. Question number eight, the drink that's made from molasses is rum. So rum's made from molasses. Question number nine, the famous author who said work is the curse of the drinking class was Oscar Wilde. So Oscar Wilde said work is the curse of the drinking class. Couldn't agree more. And question number 10, 
Lithiated Lemon is now called 7-Up. Nothing to do with Snow White. It is Lithiated Lemon. It's called 7-Up. So 10 points there. Top that little lot together. And how are we all doing? That's a bit of a interesting. If you know you, if you know you dead drug singers, it's not so bad, is it? <laughs> Otherwise, you're okay, I think. <clears throat> right. So I let you just get your scores together and tot it up there, and then we'll move on to round five. Now then, round five. There's fourteen points available. Ooh, here we go. Round five, 14 points available. And the title of the round is Board Games. So we'll make a start. Question number one in Board Games, good old Monopoly questions. You're all going to go away and check on this. You're going to get your Monopoly boards out and do a bit of cribbing, aren't you, before next week? So question number one. Three, uh, there's three points available here, and that is name the three red properties on a standard UK Monopoly board. So on a UK Monopoly board, what are the names of the three red properties? Give you a moment to think about that one. Well, I can't add up. It's 13 points available. Sorry, Damo, 13 points on this one. <laughs> Double check at the end. <laughs> so three points available there. What are the three red properties on the UK Monopoly board? Good stuff. So hopefully you've had a... Just like Monopoly always is, a good family argument about that one. That's, that's what Monopoly is for. Question number two, then. What's the name of the victim in Cluedo? Ah, there is a dead one, and he's got a name. So what is the name of the victim in the board game Cluedo? Question number three. In the game Risk, what colour is Europe? So in the board game Risk, what colour is Europe? Question number four, which board game derives its name from the Latin, I play? So which board game derives its name from the Latin, I play? Now you know this, believe me, don't worry about the Latin bit, think about it, I play. Okay, two points available on the next question then. Question number five, in Scrabble, which two letters are worth eight points? So in Scrabble, which two letters are worth eight points? Again, give me a couple of moments to... Go and get your Scrabble out of the cupboard. Don't do that, it's cheating. Okay, number six, another Monopoly question. At the start of playing a game of Monopoly, 
in England, of course. How much money does each player have? So when you start a game of Monopoly, how much money do you get? Question number seven. How many white squares are there on a chessboard? So how many white squares are there on a chessboard? I'll give you a clue. It's the same as the number of black squares. <laughs> Question number eight. Which game was invented by Canadians... Chris Haney and Scott Abbott. So which board game was invented by Canadians Chris Haney and Scott Abbott? Question number nine, back to Cluedo. How many rooms are there? How many rooms are there in Cluedo? Go on. You can get there. And then question number 10. With which board game would you associate Bernard, Eric, Franz, Maria, and Anita? So with which board game would you associate Bernard, Eric, Franz, Maria, and Anita. There you go. So I'll give you a few mo's on that one because there's a, a few things to think about through that little round. Okay. <laughs> Good drink emojis going on. There we are. Trevor, I'm not sure is that a, I'm assuming that's a drink of some sort, Trevor. Either that or a or ice lolly stuck in something. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so if you're ready, here we go. The answers to round five. Um, and yeah, I think there's 13 points available. Apologies. Um, so the three red properties on a standard UK Monopoly board are the Strand, Trafalgar Square, and Fleet Street. So the Strand, Trafalgar Square, and Fleet Street, one point each. Question number two, the name of the victim in Cluedo is Dr. Black. So the victim is called Dr. Black. Question number three, in risk, Europe is blue. So the color of Europe in the game risk is blue. Now the board game that derives its name from the Latin I play is Ludo. If you think about that, cross-reference that with the, the Swedish for, or the Scandinavian for, we play, which is Lego. I play is Ludo. 
Question number five. In Scrabble, the two letters worth eight points are X and J. So X and J are worth eight points. Not eight points on your score, one point each, but good try. Question number six. In UK Monopoly, each player starts with £1,500. So you start the game with 1500 quid. Question number seven. There are 32 white squares on a chessboard. And unbelievably, 32 black ones as well. Question number eight, the game invented by Chris Haney and Scott Abbott was Trivial Pursuit. So the Canadians invented Trivial Pursuit. I suppose if you're locked in a snowbound log cabin for 10 months of the year, you're going to think something up, aren't you? Question number nine, how many rooms are there in Cluedo? There are nine rooms in Cluedo. So I hope you all had fun listing them, but there's nine rooms in Cluedo. And then question number 10, I love this one. So you would find Bernard, Eric, Franz, Maria and Anita in Guess Who? I guess Who, if you remember that, that's the one with the little flippy faces. And they've got hat, moustaches, hair, no hair, and you have to guess who it is. So Bernard, Eric, Franz, Maria, and Anita are characters in Guess Who? Oh, Damo saying, yeah, you can have a point for Mr. Black. doesn't have to be Dr. Black. I think you, you, it depends Depends when he uh, passed his uh, medical degree, doesn't it? Or he might have, he might have become a, 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 you know, a, a consultant, in which case he'd become Mr. Black again anyway, wouldn't he? So, yeah, you can have Mr. Black. That's very good. There you go. <laughs> Love that, Brian. <laughs> Dad's 30, 1932 version at £200 each. <laughs> That's inflation for you. <laughs> I hate to think what it'll be now. God, I don't know. You won't get much for 1500 quid. So it won't be buying any hotels. Although, then again, <laughs> you might do in about three months' time. Right. So we'll let you uh, top that little one up and put things together. And then round six, there's 10 points. This is a fun one. So. Uh, if you've got if you're if you're videoing these little evenings or taking photographs now's the time to get your videos out get your cameras out because this is uh sing along uh, to find out the beatles song from the opening lines of the lyric so i'll give you the opening lines i did this on natalie she couldn't help but sing every single song until she got to the name of the title so i'll get your singing voices together and here we go. Round six. Ten points available. Name the Beatles song from the opening line of these lyrics. Question number one. I once had a girl. So what's the title of the song that begins? I once had a girl. Oh, I can hear you. Yeah, keep going. You're nearly there. Okay, question number two. Which Beatles song begins with the lyric, In the town where I was born? Stop singing, Natalie. <laughs> I can hear you. <laughs> In the kitchen, singing a heart out. In the town where I was born. Okay, question number three. Which Beatles song begins? Picture yourself in a boat on a river. Picture yourself 
in a boat on a river. Takes a while to get to the chorus of that one, so I'll give you a second. Okay, question number four. Which Beatles song begins with the lyric? Well, she was just 17. So which song begins? Well, she was just 17. <laughs> they can hear you singing, Natalie. <laughs> or I can. <laughs> Keep going, love. Question number five, which Beatle song begins with the lyric, you say yes, I say no. So which one starts with, you say yes, I say no. Sounds like a committee meeting, Brian. <laughs> you say yes, I say no. <laughs> Question number six, which Beatle song begins with the lyric? Oh yeah, I'll tell you something. So which starts with, oh yeah, I'll tell you something. Got that? I'll give you eight bars and then I'll move on to the next one. Question number seven. Jojo was a man who thought he was a loner. Hey, which Beatles song starts? Jojo was a man who thought he was a loner. Question number eight, which Beatles song begins? When I find myself in times of trouble. When I find myself in times of trouble. Far too often for my liking. Question number nine. Ooh, I need your love, babe. Guess you know it's true. So, ooh, I need your love, babe. Guess you know it's true. And then question number 10. Last night I said these words to my girl. So, last night I said these words to my girl. All right, I'll let you sing your little way through that lot. Keep on going there. Oh, I've peaked too soon. Hold on. <laughs> I'll save that. 
Okay, here we are then. Right, so Beatles song, hope you're going to, to sing along there. Here come the answers. So, uh, the Beatles song that begins with, I once had a girl, I once had a girl, or should I say, oh, I enough singing, a Norwegian wood. That was Norwegian wood. Question number two. In the town where I was born was Yellow Submarine. Question number three, picture yourself in a boat on a river, something to do with marmalade skies, Lucy in the sky with diamonds. Which they swear blind is nothing to do with drugs, honest gov. So picture yourself in a boat on a river, Lucy in the sky with diamonds. Question number four, nice early one. Well, she was just 17. You know what I mean? I saw her standing there. I saw her standing there. Question number five. You say yes, I say no. You say stay, I say go. Hello, goodbye. So hello, goodbye, answer to question five. Question number six. Oh yeah, I'll tell you something. I want to hold your hand. So question six, I want to hold your hand. Question number seven, Jojo was a man who thought he was a loner, is get back to where you want to belong. Jojo was a man who thought he was a loner, get back. Question number eight, when I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, I think. Uh, let it be. Let it be. Question number nine, ooh, I need your love, babe. Guess you know it's true, eight days a week. So question nine, eight days a week. And then finally, question 10, Last night I said these words to my girl, please please me. So please please me is the answer to number 10. So there we are. I had a bit of a family or on your own sing along to those little ones to get to the to get to the choruses. A bit of fun to finish. So I'll give you a few mo's to get your scores collated there. Good. So, if you pop those scores into the um, into the score sheet, don't forget the, uh, the the quiz question in the picture. There's an extra five points um, to get those filled in either tonight or soon as. And uh, Damien will uh, get those sorted. And again, thanks, Damo, for uh, all your help in setting up as always. And uh, hope everybody uh, had a bit of fun. And all of your guests that might be around for you uh, with the weekend had a bit of fun as well. Um, with any luck, we're uh, you know we we we're all waiting with bated breath for Boris to come up with something brilliant on Sunday. Um, so let's hope that he comes up with a a, a scheme uh, for a way forwards, and uh, we'll do that. Um, as always, though, you know, please keep safe, look after yourselves, look after each other, um, and um, for VE Day. Uh, and remember, you know, as always, uh, good old Britain will get through it. So we'll go out on a uh, on a big song, uh, stand up, wave those flags. And thank you very much. Uh, catch you next week. Take care. If it works, go. <laughs>
Lovely. Take care, everyone. Thank you.